you guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary and I am out here today in the greenhouse because it's freezing outside, literally. Um, the weather has gone from relatively mild to, I'm not sure if you could see that, to seeing your breath outside. And it's not quite at freezing yet, but in the next couple days, it's supposed to get down to well below freezing. Um, so I figured I better get my button gear and insulate my plants. And in previous years, I have just sort of cut them back, wrapped them up with some cloth and put them underneath an overturned bin outside where they had the insulation of the ground. But this year I have this beautiful greenhouse, which is awesome, but it's an entirely new learning curve for me that I'm not I just I don't know what to do um, so I have these wonderful bins and I think what I'm going to do is sort the plants by relative size lay down some burlap um, which is this stuff cut some burlap to fit around the pots and then I have some pine straw that I'll lay on top um, the thing that I'm not real sure about is it's been pretty humid in here uh, over 80% overnight and I'm really worried about my plants molding or getting a fungus uh, So I have some sulfur powder coming of course it won't be here till tomorrow and it's supposed to get below freezing tonight So I'm gonna lay this down. I gave the plants all a really good drink earlier today poured a bunch of rainwater on them to saturate the soil I'll lay this around all the pots and then I'll put um, the pine mulch over top and then, it, then tomorrow when my sulfur powder comes, I'll dust the plants and then I'll lay winter cloth over top. So for today, I'm going to get started with this. Now I've never done this before. So again, it's a learning curve, but the, the purpose of this is it's porous obviously. So it allows for the transfer of oxygen so it doesn't get real stale in there but it also will hold the mulch out of my plants, hopefully so that I can just lift this up in the spring or lift it around from the plants in the spring, removing the mulch so that it's a little bit less labor intensive for cleanup. Now I think what's gonna make a really big difference if I sort by size, I have two pots that are substantially bigger than all the rest and those are probably gonna have to be on their own and then the rest I'll, I'll do by size. So let's get started. Now I've read a lot of varying reports on whether or not it's a good idea to cut back all the pitchers or not, but the general consensus does seem to be that if the growth is healthy, you don't need to cut off the pitcher. So I'm going to go through and just cut off ones that, you know, obviously are not super fantastic. Um, and then that way, when they start growing again, in early spring all the nutrients will go to the part of the plant that I want to grow so these all are damaged so just get rid of those um, now I cut them right above the crown of the plant I'll zoom in here a minute and show you you don't want to cut them too too short but it also you don't want to cut them long either need to get a trash can out here it's something I don't have yet so one of the issues with high humidity is that it allows the moisture to seep out of the plant overnight and sit on the leaves and I'm worried that if that's what's going on when it gets really cold they're going to mildew mold or fungus and we don't want that not at all so I'm just taking a close look here and cutting off anything that looks like it may be starting to do that. So far, so good. Now again, when I get that sulfur powder tomorrow, that'll take care of a lot of that problems because I'll just dust the plants and then they won't be able to, to fungus or mold rather. All right, let's take a look at these guys. I'm just going to go through and trim everything and then I'll come back. So this bin of plants I have all trimmed back as far as everything I want to remove. And I'm just laying 
the burlap over top. <clears throat> and again, this is just so that when I go to remove all this stuff in the spring, I can try and lift out the burlap. So I've cut it a bit longer than my bin. And I'm just going to tuck it on the edge here. Which is sort of working. I'm going to tuck it like that and then I'm going to take my pine straw. Which is literally just a big box of pine needles. But it's a great insulator that breathes. So I'm going to take that and lay it over top. And what this does is just protects the plants a little bit from the cold. Lay it like this. Just to the top of the bins. And it's just an added layer of insulation. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the pots that are really tall. Um, but after I do that, I'm going to take my winter cloth, which feels a bit like felt. This is the winter cloth. You see, it's, it's kind of like felt. I'm going to take this and lay it over top. Now, this stuff's a bit more expensive, but it's supposed to really work well for insulating temperatures. So I'm going to take it and tuck it around the edges again, sort of insulate the bin a bit more, and then I'm going to do... A second layer and then I'll tuck it all in between the two bins now this is very breathable so it'll allow moisture to escape but it will also insulate a bit against the cold so I'm hoping that's gonna help quite a bit um, in previous years as I mentioned I've always overwintered outside so I wasn't entirely sure what to do here now you can see the obstacle I have with these pitchers is that they're all way bigger and I suppose I could cut all the growth off but since there's nothing wrong with it I don't really want to do that. I mean I am going to trim the ones that have noticeable you know decay or whatever but most of these are like good viable pitchers so I'm I don't really want to cut them all off. Um, even though I won't be able to see them all winter and enjoy them since I'll be covering them. Look, you can see the bugs inside this picture. Can you see that? Pretty cool. Maybe we'll cut over some, cut open some of the pictures I cut off here in a few minutes. So again, I'm just going to take some burlap and lay it around this or over this plant and then uh, put down some pine straw and then lay the winter cloth over top. Now this one's going to look a little funky because the plants are so tall, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Now all of these materials are reusable, so come spring, I'll just take all this apart and put them in totes to store them for the next winter. Though with the amount of pine trees I have in my yard, I should have just collected pine needles. I was just worried because it's been so damp here. I didn't want, <clears throat> I didn't want all that moisture. So again, just tucking this around the plants. Again, this is just so that it makes it a little bit easier come spring to do my cleanup or opening them up for winter so that the pine needles aren't all inside every plant. 
You know what? I'm going to give these a bit more space. Take my pine mulch. Insulate my plants. And then again, I'll take my winter fabric and cover. Now, I think what I'm going to do as well is pull up my pond plants to these two bins and treat them the same way since I'm not covering them with a tub like I usually do. Right now, they're still growing, but they really don't need to be. Let's take a quick look at those. So I have them down in these tubs, and I think I'm just going to move them up here and treat them the exact same way. now I have all the plants covered with burlap and pine straw and I think what I'm going to do with the winter cloth is just run it the length and then back instead of tucking it around. And I think what I'm going to do with the winter cloth is just run it the length and then back. Um, I, I don't see why not since they're not in the ground and that'll mean less cuts for me as well. So this is the end result. The winter cloth is supposed to insulate to about 15 degrees. Remember, my target is at least as cold as 45 degrees, but I'm hoping that by insulating them like this inside the greenhouse, it's going to provide a really gradual cool down instead of dramatic swings down below freezing. Because the weather here just seems to be getting crazier and crazier. Now, most people would overwinter these types of plants outdoors, and that is totally appropriate. You would um, do it in a very similar fashion. Some people stack bales of hay or straw around them. Some people wrap them with this winter cloth. Some people just pine mulch them. There's various strategies that you can do. Other alternatives are to overwinter the subtropical carnivorous plants within the refrigerator. I'm not prepared to do all that, and since I have this wonderful greenhouse, I'm giving a new thing a try. So, we'll see how it goes, and I won't need to water them again until, I'll probably check on them around Valentine's Day, and then again in March. And if it warms up like I expect it will in March, at that point I'll be able to pull all these coverings off and allow them to start their new growth cycle. All in all, I think it cost me about 50 bucks this year, but again, I'll be able to reuse these supplies for several years at least. And we'll see how all my uh, greenhouse water batteries work down here. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know below if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions.